everyone makes fun of butt rock, and with that comes a lot of Nickelback jokes. I assure you, Nickelback is not the worst in butt rock. And for some reason, you want me to point out what you already know. But if that's what you want, I'll go ahead and try to break it down and... I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's take a look and see why Theory of a Dead Man is worth regretting. In the year 2008, rock was dying a death through irrelevance. The focus was no longer on creativity or edge, but rather a format with the same sound. In doing this, music fans and commercial airwaves all went to other genres as more people were leaving the butt rock behind. Rock and metal fans were going to online sources for their music, while FM stations stayed dedicated to playing their verse chorus verse style that would sing about raunchy sex and lyrics sounding like they were written by a 14 year old. I'm not going to be flashing as many lyrics on screen as I have done in previous Regretting the Past episodes because that would require me typing them all out and I don't really want to read through all of this trash again. That brings us to Canada's Theory of a Dead Man and their album Scars and Souvenirs, which was released on April 1st, 2008. Ha ha ha, joke writes itself. Ha ha ha, Theory of a Dead Man played the best April Fool's Day joke ever by releasing this. Ha ha ha. Now I hate April Fool's Day even more. Anyway, Scars and Sewers was not just the third album by Theory of a Dead Man, but it was also their most successful by a long shot. This album charted at number 26 on the US Billboard 200 Albums list and posted nine singles. Nine! Many of which ranked high on respective Billboard charts. And if you're wondering specifics of sales, this trash dump went platinum in the US and Canada. It's been a while since I've done one of these comparisons for two big albums or names. Well, Anthrax has never had a platinum album which means that one of the big four and a staple in metal is not as successful as Theory of a Dead Man. You see why I don't like doing these comparisons? They're depressing. So with that in the back of my mind, knowing that this is a band that capitalized on the Nickelback formula of cashing in, I mean songwriting, it's not impossible for the music to be bad all the way through. I mean, surely there has to be some redeeming qualities in Theory of a Dead Man. I am lying to you. There are no real redeeming qualities here. I just don't know how to really start a video talking about theory of a dead man. I'm already bored and upset, and I'm only a few minutes in. One thing I would like to point out before we get going is that the overall opinion of theory of a dead man, or more specific vocalist Tyler Connolly, is that his writing is a bit condescending and demeaning towards women. Some people even flat out call him a sexist. I'll get to more of that later, but keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this fun, sweet journey of good times and music. I've been requested to talk about Theory of a Dead Man for years, and my patrons finally voted on an album of theirs to cover. So, here I am. Let's take a look at Scars and Souvenirs, the platinum selling album, and see why they're worth regretting. For the record, I already hate this. remember the song So Happy? You should because it still gets airplay today. This was the first track and first single to come off Scars and Suffering. It even has Brent Smith of Shinedown doing background vocals on it. <laughs> wow. Brent Smith really went through some hard times back then. So Happy charted well on Billboard's mainstream rock chart, and I can honestly say it's one of the best songs on this album. Keep that phrase as a measuring stick because this song is the most riff by numbers generic radio rock cheese imaginable. It's really just a butt rock anthem about breaking up with someone and finally being free. The music video makes it look like a woman killed a guy and drives off all satisfied. Ah, uh, awesome? The music sucks, guys. This is the standard rock formula but without all the interesting melody or speed changes. The crappy pedal effect guitar solo adds nothing in sweet mercy. I don't think Tyler Connolly could sound more bored. Everything just sucks. And this is one of the better songs on the album. How did this chart so high? What happened in 2008 where this was the pinnacle? Was Nickelback too edgy for some people and they wanted something not as intense so they went with this watered down music? Get used to those Nickelback comparisons, by the way, because I'm sure there are more coming. It's kind of like that old meme, you know, Yo dog, I heard you like butt rock, so I put some Nickelback with your theory of a dead man so you can butt rock while you butt rock. Yo, dog, I 
dog, I heard you like butt rock, so I got some Daughtry with your theory of a dead man, so you can butt rock while you butt rock. Wow, I did not expect this to go over so well. Yep, Chris Daughtry is featured on this song. Went from Shinedown to Daughtry on this one. All joking aside, Daughtry on the backup vocal stands out much better than Connolly does and at least adds more impact to the song. I wanted to point that out because that's really the only highlight of the song, by the way. This music is just a steady rhythm for almost four minutes. The drumming is just hitting the cymbals repeatedly during the chorus and the vocals are a flat, monotone exhale. It sucks! This is the most vapid, boring radio song I've heard in a long time and this song about being left was preceded by a song about leaving someone. I kind of feel like the songwriting process was just watching Hallmark movies and using the basic plots to come up with lyrics. The first track about leaving someone you are fed up with, the second about missing someone who leaves you, all with garbage background music. In case you were wondering, this was the sixth radio single and charted on Billboard as well, because back in 2008 and 2009, radio would play anything if it was in their format and just slightly offensive. I made the comparison a few years ago that Three Doors Down is just plain vanilla ice cream, while well, Theory of a Dead Man is stale vanilla wafers. No one wants to touch them, and they were just made to get quick money. Then they were left on the shelf for too long, and they're just sitting there, rotting and reminding everyone of the money they wasted. Oh, this already sucks. Hold over to the side of the road, go skinny dipping in the dark. Oh my gosh, it's watered down Nickelback. There were a ton of bands that were trying to capitalize on the Nickelback formula Chad Kruger made, and Theory of a Dead Man might have copied the formula while still somehow managing to suck even more. The guitar work sucks, the bass line is almost non-existent, the faded vocals are laughable. How did they think this would be good to put on an album? The first two songs here were weak, but I at least get why they were successful. Got It Made would be laughed at by anyone. I'm gonna use this analogy now so I don't have to keep bringing up Nickelback as much. You know how Chad Kruger once said that he copied the formula of popular radio songs and applied that to his own music writing and that's how he got successful? Selling out, pretty much. Well, Theory of a Dead Man is kind of like the kid sitting behind Nickelback in class, where Cheater, Chad Kruger, and Nickelback copied the formula to pass and succeed. Theory of a Dead Man sitting behind them, trying to copy looking over their shoulder but not quite getting the formula right, but still barely able to pass. And I think Theory of a Dead Man should have been held back a few grades. <laughs> this song is one big pile of trash. You'd think that when they take the tempo down, they might be able to show a different side of the band. One that's not awful. But no, now I'm just bored and embarrassed by how desperate this is to make the Canucks sound deep. I called them Canucks. I know that's a mean thing to say in Canada, but they have earned that title. So much of Not Meant To Be is Connolly trying to hold a note, but it's not in key, and he instead sounds like he is groaning for a long time. The riffs suck, the drums don't do anything. This is what teenagers listen to after their first breakup, thinking this song meant something to them. Everything about this is awful, the writing is cliche, and even with the added strings, it doesn't take away that it's a guy groaning out lyrics inspired by some 14-year-old's diary. Not Meant To Be was the fifth radio single for this album. It ranked on several charts in the US and Canada. I still can't believe radio played so many songs off of this album. It's like some crappy radio station in Reno lost all their hard drives and only had three physical CDs left in the studio. And this was one of them, so they had to just keep playing this music over and over again. And now no one goes to Reno anymore. No one else goes to Reno because of their awful police force. No, no, no! no! Son of a bitch, she tricked me! The vocals sound like he's singing through a drive through speaker box. The chorus sucks, and it's more of the odd, whiny lyrics of being used like a crutch when someone who hurt you tries to rely on you. How many bad romance songs can you go through before you finally realize, wow, maybe I'm the one that's bad at this whole love thing? I call this song filler, but I feel like filler still serves a purpose at stretching out an album length. As this song Crush extends the time I sit here listening to it, it's not so much filler as it is a felony. Someone should go to jail for this garbage. Production sucks. Lyrics are cheesy and shallow. The vocals wah, 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 with weak music in the background. They could have just left this song out. It wouldn't have made Scars and Shoot Me in the Face better, but it's about as useless as a third nipple. It's just there to take up space and should be cut off. 
I apologize to everyone with a third nipple. And if you're a Theory of a Dead Man fan who also has a third nipple, wow, you have a terribly hard life. Okay, the writing scheme is all over the place on this one, and wow, these guys suck. There's no other way to say it. It's a song about falling in love and leaving everything behind to start something special with that lady. Three and a half minutes of this garbage. It sucks. And somehow, the music video is worse. Seriously, it's insanely cheesy. It's like what a middle school teacher would write out as a play just to have their kids act out something for the rest of the day to keep them busy. It's so bad. <laughs> So naturally, and with how awful everything is here, of course it was successful. Ranked on several charts, added to the long list of singles from Scars and Stupidity, and who the heck would hear this on the radio in their car and not immediately change the station? Or turn the radio off? Or rip the stereo out of the console and throw it out the window? All or nothing, going all in, taking a risk. How many more cliches can we fit in one song? Is this really what fit the scene back in 2008? I don't remember it being this cheesy. I say that, but 10 years ago, the pop scene got single ladies from Beyonce and the rock scene got Theory of a Dead Man. So it was really dark times for rock 10 years ago. Alright, no joke, they finally laid off the attempt at the romantic cheese to fill sitcom commercials for couples to have a song like this talking about people who are struggling and finding support. The music from the standard rock scene is switched out to a much more solemn and mature style. I'm not gonna say it's great, but it's miles ahead of what we heard previously on this plate of hot garbage. There really isn't much more to say. It's not great, but I'm not gonna rip apart this song because it really does sound like they were trying to do more than just the status quo chug along riffs. So. Whatever. It's not terrible. The next song is terrible. After a song about sticking through the tough times because people care about you, they follow it up with one of the worst butt rock songs I've ever heard in my life. The first couple lines of lyrics are enough to prove why this band is a bunch of hacks, let alone the chorus. And to top it all off, this song went to number one on Billboard. That's right, it's the song radio and broadcasting couldn't get enough of. This song is like the aftermath of Buck Cherry. I would like to point out that Tyler Connolly said that this song was inspired by his wife. Yep. That means this filthy, raunchy, degrading, and all-around awful song was dedicated to the love of his life. Really think about that. Think of all the amazing love songs out there in rock and outside of the genre, and this creep writes a song like this. I can't even focus on one element. Everything is awful. It's just an abomination to rock and love songs and eardrums and the human race. How did this go to number one? The Bad Touch by the Bloodhound Gang was more romantic and better crafted. I still can't get over that. Bad Girlfriend was meant as a love song to the man's wife. His loved one. How does that work out? If another guy wrote this type of song to a girl, would it always work out that well? They followed a song about hanging on and not letting go because people care about you with a song complaining about everything like a five-year-old screaming, I hate my life. 
go screw yourselves. This is simple plan levels of whining. There is no argument. The lyrics are a list of things a man complains about, and the answer to it all is giving the middle finger to the sky and shouting profanity at it. That's what crazy people do. Theory is also trying to play it more of a focused, level-headed, reflective sound instead of an angry, loud vibe. Literally, everything about this is wrong. The speed is too slow, the rhythm is off, the vocals are laughably bad, and the lyrics, again, read like they were written by Simple Plan. That might sound like a stretch, but read the lyrics to Hate My Life by Theory of a Dead Man, and tell me you can't hear that Canadian brat band singing a song like this. That's right, Theory of a Dead Man and Simple Plan are both from Canada. I know that Blame Canada meme I keep showing in some of my videos gets old, but do you get now why I keep showing it? That was the actual music video clip too. I didn't Photoshop that bad text. <laughs> Everything that this band touches is garbage. <laughs> All right, there's a unique organ opener, and it's slower to the loud build, and it stands out a bit. And then it just goes into the saying song and dance. Definitely not the worst song on the list, and Connolly sounds a little better here, like he cares or he's trying or something, but the song is still weak. It's another track about cheating women. Have you gotten the point yet of what I talked about earlier, that this guy, and most likely the band, really have a rough view on women? I mean really condescending and hypocritical. Back in 2011, Tyler Connolly gave an interview saying that they really aren't misogynists, but... Eh, evidence really is kind of proving otherwise, and this is one crap album to back that claim up. In a Q&A on the band's website, Connolly was asked, Do you hate women? Connolly's immediate reply in jest was, no way, I love women. What, a guy's not allowed to vent his frustration? Isn't that what chicks do all the time when they hang out? Boo, 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 boo. I don't need to talk about this song that much anymore, do I? The song that goes, I caught you only wearing a little smirk. You already know it sucks. It's the end of the summer. I swear, the song End of the Summer sounds like it was meant to be used at the end of summer sales for a car dealership. The drums are so robotic it feels like they were made in Pro Tools software, and whatever inflection in the vocals is gone, because this one sounds like he's just trying to get through it. Filler by numbers. And here's an old generic car commercial with this crap song in the background. I'm running out of analogies here, by the way, about how boring and bad this is. I just want to lie down and not have to remember the past two weeks of having to listen to this album over and over again for editing. Not to mention this album feels insanely long as we're only on track 11, but it's only 46 minutes in total time. Though if you listen to it in one sitting, you'll probably be left unconscious for 12 hours after temporary insanity, so it's understandable to lose track of time after doing that. I do not recommend using this album as a sleep aid, though, unless you want some weird butt rock nightmares and your neighbors to hate you. Apparently this guy is all over the road with his emotions toward women because after a few songs of complaining and whining about relationships, he's now singing about missing someone and wanting to come home to someone waiting for him. What is wrong with this guy? I'm starting to think none of these women are real and they're all made up in his head. But hey, they busted out an acoustic guitar for Wait For Me, so I feel like that's changing things up slightly from the standard dumpster fire this music has been. As the song goes on, it just derails into Connolly stretching out his vocals to try and carry the note again, and it's awful. It actually feels like it could have been on the pop country side of music if marketed right. I know Theory of a Dead Man doesn't really fit the genre that well, but country fans, please take him away. No, I'm sorry to say. As it finally ends with Sacrifice, I can't really say anything about the song outside of it being a week closer and sounding identical to music already played on this album. No variety, weak guitar solos, generic stock drums, cheesy romanticized lyrics, literally everything that embodies butt rock, and why rock in general took such a hit in popularity in the late 2000s. And with that, I can finally come to a conclusion. Theory of a Dead Man is worse than Nickelback. Yeah, it's not even close either.
people rip on Nickelback for many reasons. I know I have as well, but I can at least say that Nickelback had the fire and creativity back in the late 90s before they went straight to commercial formula and to get attention on radio. Theory of a Dead Man went straight for the sellout method and succeeded. Nine released singles from this album, most of which charted and some went to number one, all with the same sound and terrible qualities that radio 10 years ago refused to stray from. I'd say Theory of a Dead Man were good businessmen, but that'd be giving them too much credit because their method is very obvious, exposed, and duplicated. Just like they duplicated others to get there. Scars and Souvenirs is honestly one of the poorest albums I've heard of regretting the past, easily in the bottom half of the bin, for all the albums I've covered on this series. I can't really figure it out on which point I hate most. The vapid music, the terrible condescending tone towards women, how awful his voice is with that constant groaning. Either way, it's all just awful. And oddly enough, the worst song I've ever heard from these guys isn't even on this album. I am so freaking bored, nothing to do today, I guess I'll sit around and manicure. We can make fun of bands like Nickelback and Simple Plan for giving a bad name to Canadian rock, but let's be honest, the Theory of a Dead Man are just as guilty. Whatever we did to our neighbors up north, we did not deserve this. That reminds me. Excuse me. And that is why, folks, it is by far the worst album of 2018, and you already know what it is. But hell? Luke? Yeah, what's wrong with you guys? Excuse me? Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. What is wrong with Canada and all that hot garbage music you've sent us? You mean Nickelback, right? No. Yes, besides them. Celine Dion? Yeah, her too. Theory of a Dead Man. How dare you send us that vile plague? Oh yeah, because the avalanche of deathcore, soundcloud rap, and bro country you guys export is so much better, right? Oh yeah, well at least we are responsible for Simple Plan. No, your country was responsible for Attila, King 810, and Amur. Shut up! You shut up! Ah! Yes. I'm sorry, Mark. I know you cannot be held responsible for some of the bad bands that are claiming to be Canadian. Yeah, you know what? I'm sorry, too. We both have had some great music come from our countries, and we can't just focus on the few terrible ones. Like, I don't know, Theory of a Dead Man. Yeah, we can easily agree that Theory of a Dead Man is terrible. Huh, I mean, hell. If I want brainless, half-misanthropic post-grunge that shamelessly copies a mediocre formula, well, I don't, because it's not the mid-2000s. I thought we as a society moved on. Makes Bare Naked Ladies sound like Queen! Yeah, they are just the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, folks, just don't listen to Theory of a Dead Man whatsoever. This isn't a bit anymore. Don't listen to Theory of a Dead Man. They're terrible. Don't listen. Ever. 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 And that was an embarrassing look at Scars and Souvenirs by Theory of a Dead Man. Special thanks to Spectrum Pulse and Go Gretchen for helping out with this video. Please check out their channels by clicking on the YouTube cards and description. Huge thanks to my patrons who help keep Rocked going, and a special thanks to my patron Christian Romulaldi. He's an actor in Germany, and you can check out his work on the YouTube link in the description below. Please subscribe to Rocked if you want to get notified on upcoming videos like the year-end list I have coming soon, and more regretting the past. You can check out my concert photography on Instagram, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.